Working in music is more than just a 9 to 5 job. It requires a whole lot of commitment, often for not a lot of compensation or even recognition. It doesn't help that there's so much misinformation out there about how to get into the music industry and what to do once you are there. This is why artist manager and founder of Lisa Media, Nigo Tubula, has put together a workshop called Music Business. He joins us now via Zoom this morning to share more on that. Nigo, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good, man. Good to have you on the show. Good to see you. Uh, first it's, of all, what are the key Nico issues? Bi... Come oh, again? sorry. I wanted to correct you. It's Nico Bilankulu, not Tibula. Nico Bilankulu. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. I beg your pardon. Thanks for that. Uh, first of all, uh, what are some of the key issues that will be discussed at this workshop? Basically, the aim is to, you know, um, empower the young ones that don't know and make sure that we give them information that is also outstanding, mostly on the ground and, you know, maybe amongst their pets. So it's just basically giving brief of how to register music, what to do with the music after being registered. And most of the common factors that we face as people that are in the music, uh, music industry is um, the issue of having contracts and stuff like that. So a lot of people want to become obviously musicians or they want to be in the arts, but sometimes they don't know what they're getting themselves into legally or maybe how to you know, plan for marketing, things like that. So what should people be aware of when joining the music industry? There's a lot of things. Number one, you need to go to school. Um, there isn't mm -hmm. any industry that you can be part of without going to school. Right. So the school is important. Um, people need to educate themselves. You, remember, in any industry, there's always different departments. So even if you want to be in the music industry, there's always going to be a marketing department. There's always going to be a finance department. There's always going to be a legal department. So a lot of people think sometimes the music industry is an easy way out. But in any event, you need to get yourself educated. So you need to know how to read. That's why people or maybe musicians then end up saying so-and-so or this company, you know, um, is maybe robbing me. But it's because sometimes we don't know the legalities. We don't read the fine prints of, of you know, contracts and stuff like that. Yeah, mentioning uh, the fine prints and uh, some of the things that they probably didn't know before signing on the dotted line. I mean, it leads to my next question. What is that uh, piece of information that you wish you had known before joining this industry? I think most importantly, as I'm talking on behalf, obviously, of musicians, I'm not a musician, but um, Gakulu, you know, we face uh, uh, royalties problems where musicians don't know how much they're getting. Sometimes it's, you know, splits of either a song. Sometimes it's splits of over maybe performing rights. So usually musicians will always complain about, you know, either, either, either not making enough money or being robbed money. But sometimes it's things that they were told before or they were shown or they even signed, but they were not away. But so most of the time, if, if you get into something knowing all the angles, but I'm not even so about it before, it helps your business more than it's just being anything that you just wake up and do. You know, Nico, it's so unfortunate that today we see so many artists, especially uh, those uh, who were very popular in the yester years and uh, who still in, I mean, who still uh, doing genres which are not so popular today. We see them struggling and uh, suffering. So what is it that they probably didn't do or didn't know uh, as a result of their fate? I think, I think most importantly, people need to educate themselves um, financially. You know, our musicians make a lot of money. They make a lot of money in royalties. They make a lot of money in performances. Mm -hmm. um, so usually, you know, the society also is the one that I would blame because of the reason why a, maybe a certain artist would level to a certain lifestyle is because of they want to be perceived as a certain person. But most of the time, we don't understand money. We get into the industry, you know, seeing the nice cars and, you know, nice houses, but not knowing very well how to work for that. So... If, if before, before you sit down at home and you want to be a musician, you must know that it's work. It's not just something that you just, you know, put on just because you are talented or just because you've got a nice voice. It always comes with a lot of pressure and a lot of work. So financially, our musicians need to really educate themselves because we don't want people, you know, passing on and still being broke. We don't want people passing on and still not being able to help other people around them. So... 
financially, I would always emphasize that we need to educate ourselves and make sure that we save. Our artists are not saving. Um, our musicians are just wasting money. Uh, they're focusing on lifestyle. They're focusing on branded clothes. So we need to change that narrative and make sure that we speak to the young ones so that when they decide to get into the music industry, they get into the music industry knowing that it's not about the fleshy life. It's not about the nice cars. Yes, they do come later on. But when you get in, you need to be introduced and be, be told what are the steps for you to be a successful musician. And I suppose that money management will also be tackled in the workshop, isn't it? Yes, most importantly. Okay. All right. Now, how do we move past managers robbing artists? Um, I think as much as there would be managers robbing artists, there would also be, you know, artists not understanding a few fine prints. You know, it's like mm. any other company. A, an employee would always complain about either not getting paid not getting paid enough or not getting paid the money that they're supposed to. So as, again, um, contracts between managers, you know, it's very important. So if a manager meets an artist, and sometimes usually it's verbal contracts because it's, it's all about, you know, arts. We don't really look at how important the fine print or the contract is. So if we are friends, we would be like, oh, no, maybe we are working, let's do this, let's do this later when it catches up and then it comes back as, oh, but we didn't agree on this or you didn't agree on that. So between an artist and a manager, it's also very important to have an agreement, even if it is a verbal agreement, but it needs to be clear because sometimes I would feel maybe as a manager, I'm not getting enough or he would feel as an artist, you know, or she, he's not getting enough. So the relationship between sometimes becomes perfect, but we forget to also have agreements. So if an artist obviously is, you know, getting themselves into um, a company or, or, or an agreement, they would also know what they signed up for. Not uh, being obviously a, a suffering later on. You know, sometimes we have a lot of, let's do it, let's just talk about it because of it's on the streets and because of it's music, we take it for granted. But later it always catches up with us. So, and knowing exactly what you're getting yourself into and make sure that you do have at least any type of an agreement, even if it's not a contract, could be something that you guys speak about, you could record it, but any form of agreement is very important. And it's always been a thorny issue for so many artists, isn't it? Because uh, some of the artists attributed uh, you know, to uh, the source of their misery or financial misery today. So do you not think that it's time to have a legislation in place that will regulate the remuneration that artists should be getting? Because uh, so many artists have been complaining that they are only getting a fixed salary while the manager or the producers get you know, the bulk of the royalties. I think most importantly also, it, it, it's, it's a conversation, you know, and that's why we, we're going around the country and doing workshops and just teaching the people that sometimes whatever that you see on TV or, you know, it's not everything as perfect as, as it looks. So it is good for you to educate yourself about something before you're getting into. Um, in any work or a job, you need to know about the job, even if you can maybe do the job, but you need to really understand the type of a job you are doing. So as people that are in the arts, I would emphasize that we also, you know, look at and, and focus on these small things that we always take for granted, like, you know, saving money, small contracts. And also, usually the typical mistake that musicians would do after recording a song, for instance, is not having a sit down and talking about the splits. And later on, you would find out that this producer is complaining that this beat was made by me. This is what I contributed. But all of that is happening only because of there was no sit down and there was no you know, formal agreement. So we're going around and we, it's not me only. You know, there's a team. There's people that are in the radio. There's people that are in the marketing, uh, um, social media. So it's a whole group of people just going around to educate. The ones that would want to one day get into the industry, the one that, you know, maybe... They, maybe they don't really know much because we've got a lot of people that are talented but also didn't go to school. So we need to go out there and speak to those people. Here's where it becomes tricky. So we have an artist from, uh, you know, rural KZN who's uh, uh, very, very, very talented, uh, uh, comes to Joburg and uh, wants to break into the music industry. And then a music promoter or a producer 
tells him to sign this uh, this particular contract and uh, without mm. him without even uh, you know discussing that contract or the or the dictates of the contract and uh, he finds himself signing his life away and that contract always uh, you know suits the interest of the producers the or manager. the promoters yeah so so usually i feel like we we were also focusing too much on this thing of being signed and being under a certain company or being under a label. Anyone can be their own manager, can be their own, you know, a, a, a producer or whatever the case. So let's also not focus. So anyone that is talented out there, don't think that your dream would be only possible if you work with a certain company or if you work with a certain individual. Because this time, um, that's the only way people then would take advantage because of uh, people being vulnerable. So if you know your story, you know what you're getting mm, yourself into, mm. you won't be then going around signing documents. You would right. rather, you know, there's, now there's internet, there's platforms, there's YouTube, there's online engagement. So there's a lot of ways okay. you can actually put your music out or you can put yourself out without All right, we have to leave it there, Nico. Company. Unfortunately, we are out of time. But thank you so much for joining us. And uh, where are these workshops held, by the way? So we are starting, oh, also before, I have partnered with um, United City College. We're going also around, while we educating people about music, we're also giving an opportunity for people to study. So I have um, partnered with uh, you, you, United City College to give bursaries across the country for less fortunate kids, for people that can't further their studies, for people that also would want, you know, one day to, to have a higher qualification, but maybe not yeah. finishing a trick. So we're managing all of that, but we're starting on the 4th of March. Um, the details would be on the website. If you also would want more details, you'd follow us on social media. At least media, my, my own personal one is Nico the Great. All right. Nico the Great, great chatting to you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Bro. All right. Uh, we just spoke to artist manager Nico Bilangulu on a workshop that he's put together to educate those interested in joining the music industry.